If you've ever taken a science class before, chances are you've written a CER. If you're not familiar with that, we're going to talk about what that is. CER stands for Claim, Evidence, and Reasoning. It's a way that we answer questions in science class to show our understanding. You can actually use this in all of your other subjects, too. Let's talk about what a claim, evidence, and reasoning means. Claim answers the guiding question. Evidence is going to be either your own data that you've collected in a lab or data that you've been provided with. Reasoning involves a rule or scientific principle that explains why the evidence supports the claim that you've provided. A claim should relate to whatever you're investigating. If you're trying to answer a question, a claim is going to answer whatever you're asking. It's usually only one sentence, and it's going to uh, conclude whatever you're trying to find out. It should never start with yes or no. Now, if you make a claim, you're going to need evidence to support that. Any evidence that you provide has to make sure that it's sufficient. That means there has to be enough of it to back up your claim. And it also needs to be appropriate in that it supports your claim. You don't want to include evidence that doesn't back up your claim. Evidence can be information that you've collected from a lab, or it can be information that you find online or data that's provided to you by the teacher. Reasoning in science explains the why or what's happening. It ties together the claim and the evidence. It shows how or why your data counts as evidence, and it's also going to provide a justification for why you're including the evidence with your claim. And then the most important part is it's going to use scientific principles to explain what's happening. This is how we check for your understanding to see if you are able to explain what's going on. We're going to use a demonstration to show an example of how to write a CER. We're going to use the question, is magnesium flammable? If we want to know if magnesium is flammable, there's a few ways we can find out. First thing I'm going to do is put on my goggles and then I'm going to pick up my piece of magnesium with these tongs. And here I have a butane lighter. By igniting it and placing the magnesium into the flame, I can see if anything happens. So this is a low temperature flame compared to some of the other flames that we'll use in this class. Nothing's really happening by placing that in there. I also have another heat source called a Bunsen burner. If I turn on my gas and ignite the flame within, then I get a temperature flame that's very similar to what's in this lighter. You can notice that the colors look almost the same. So what I want to do here is lower this just a little bit. And then down here at the bottom of the Bunsen burner, there's a port that I can open up. That allows for more oxygen to come in and that's gonna allow for more combustion within this Bunsen burner, and it's gonna produce a much hotter flame. So now I've got a hotter flame, we can see if there's any other results here. So what I'm gonna do here is take my magnesium, we're gonna place it into the flame. And if you start to notice here, don't look directly at it, but what's happening here is once that magnesium starts to burn, it's going to react with the oxygen in the air and create something called magnesium oxide, which now is much different than what we started with. The original magnesium looked like this. It was uh, silver, shiny, and malleable. Our new result looks like this. It's almost white and powdery. So we see that at a different temperature, we get different results. So with a low temperature, we had no burning. But at a high temperature, we had much different results. Now the other way I could have found out if magnesium was flammable is by looking on the SDS sheet. And it actually shows here that magnesium has a flammability rating of two. So there's a few different ways that we can find that out. But burning, it's much more fun. Now that we've collected our evidence and we've done our demonstration, we have enough information to write our CER. This is the wrong way to write a CER. Claim, yes. Evidence, it burned. Reasoning, magnesium burns in fire. Even though we're answering the guiding question, claims should be more than just a yes or no. Evidence, to say it burned, if we remember back using the low temperature flame, 
nothing actually happened. It did not burn until we used a high enough flame. And then to say magnesium burns in fire wasn't correct if the temperature wasn't high enough. This doesn't show enough understanding that you know what's going on with the demonstration. We're going to look at a different way to write a CER. You can already notice that this one has a lot more information. Claim. Magnesium is flammable. It's a short sentence, but it answers the guiding question. Evidence. When magnesium was placed into the hotter flame, it ignited and produced a bright white light. You can notice here that we've provided a, a data table to show the results of our experiment. Reasoning. Magnesium has the chemical property of flammability that allows it to burn at hot enough temperatures. The white light produced when magnesium burned was a result of the magnesium bonding with the oxygen atoms in the air. This was an exothermic chemical reaction because heat was released and a new substance, magnesium oxide, was formed. Even though you might not know the science behind this reasoning yet, or scientific principles, this is something that you'll learn as you go through the year. This reasoning provides a lot more information than the one we just saw. The evidence backs up our claim. It shows uh, how to support it. And then the reasoning shows that we understand what's happening. CERs are going to take practice. You're going to get better at them, but it's going to be the way that we show our understanding throughout the year. It just takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get better at it.